Hey, this is Sunay. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I want to talk about the data quality in the MetaTrader 5 testing process. So we will talk about external data, broker data, and what the best ways, um, yeah, and about the best ways to test your trading strategies to get the best possible um, view on your strategy and to see if it was profitable in the past and if it could be profitable in the future. So for this purpose, I used the Tick Data Manager and I made a video about the Tick Data Manager before. So if you haven't watched it, check it out on the channel. And in this Tick Data Manager, I um, downloaded two data sources. The first one is Dukas Copy and the second one is Alpari ECN1. So this is just as a little side note. The data from Dukas Copy and Alpari ECN1 for EURUS dollar was imported to my MetaTrader 5 terminal and I created some custom symbols for this. So you can see here for the custom symbols, I have EURUS dollar underscore TDS, which is the Dukas Copy data and I have EURUS dollar underscore ECN, which is the Alpari data. Also, and I of course still have the EURUS dollar normal broker data, which is for me coming from IC markets. So I have three different sources of data right now in my um, in my MetaTrader 5. And I will now go ahead or in the next steps, I will go ahead and test the same strategy with all of these different data sources. And then we are able to do a comparison. So let's talk a little, little bit more about the setting. You probably know that I have this Scalping Project Expert Advisor and this um, program is still running on a server that I have. So you can see here in the history, this program is running from um, October 2022 and it's running in US dollar and US dollar Japanese yen. In this um, little example here, I will only focus on Euro US dollar. Also, we will always focus on the period from starting from the 1st November 2022 up to the 1st October 2023. This is because for this period, I have never changed the settings for the strategy on the server. Also, for this period, I have data from the IC Markets broker also from Dukas Copy and from Alpari. These both are coming from the TIG data suite. So let me close the server here. So I already took the trades, all the trades from my live trading account and added them to my trading journal here. So what you can see here is, um, this is pretty much just the complete performance of the account. So you can see we have all the trades starting from October until um, yeah November 2023 so October 2022 until November 2023 so what I want to do here is I want to have the same period oh this is in German but I'm just filtering for the period here starting at the 1st November 2022 until the 1st of October um, 2023 also, I'm filtering for Euro US dollar only. So if I filter this, you can see I now only have the trades in Euro US dollar for the selected period. And this is the outcome. So this, what we see here in the trade body on the screen right now, this is the actual performance in the live trading account. So this has nothing to do with, with testing. This is what actually happened in a live trading account. So real, uh, real life conditions, no manipulating, no nothing. This is the actual performance of the um, strategy in this time period in EURUS dollar. So this is our baseline pretty much for the further testing process. So what I did next is I did a test um, with EURUS dollar in the H1 chart in the same time period with the exactly same settings starting with the same deposit in euro in this account. If I test this for the same period, this the trades should in the best case be the same, right? Because it's, it's the same strategy, the same time period, the same settings and the same broker actually. So let's have a look at the graph. And this is how the graph looks like in the strategy tester. So if we do the comparison 
to the trade party here, we can see that it's not quite the same, right? So in the um, in the in the trade buddy, we so in the in the actual live account, we only made a profit of nine euro and uh, ten cents. In the tester, we made a profit of um, fifty four euro and forty four cents. The history quality of my broker data right now is eighty one percent. So this is not too bad but still the profit is way better in the tester here than it is in the live trading account so you might wonder what happens if we get the history quality up to 100 percent and we can do this by using the Dukas copy data so let me go here custom Dukas copy data is um, selected so let me check if um, yeah, we need the custom commission here. So let me fill this real quick. So I don't know if I have to add the custom here. Okay, there we go. Now we see the commission is applied. So we have the same testing environment. And let's have a look at the graph. And let's compare it to the actual live trading performance. And uh, we will see that this is not too far away from the actual result, which is kind of good. But yeah, let's uh, wait until um, the outcome is here. And there it is. So we see the, the performance is still better in the tester. But if we just have a look at the performance, graph we can see it's looking kind of similar so we have whoops we have the same high here at around this position we have um, these two losing trades here it's the same for the test and the live trading account we have this sequence of losing trades still the same in the test and live trading account then we have a lot of winning trades we have a losing trade we miss one losing trade in the tester, which will of course make a bit, big difference. But then we have this losing trade again. And in the end, we miss another losing trade in the tester. So we can see the tester is still a little bit better. And um, yeah, we can try to explain this later on. Um, but first, let me do some more tests using the Alpari data here. So Euro US dollar ECN is the Alpari data. And if I test this now, we will see that the performance is, um, yeah, I mean, I did this before and we will see that the performance is really, really different. And I know this already. So uh, I'm just doing this to explain one or two things that are really important if you are testing um, using the TIG data suite or if you're testing using external data. So let me just wait until this test is finished. It will just take a second. So, but, but, but here we can see we have a lot more losing trades in a row in this um, test now, in this test in which we are using, or I am using the Alpari ECN data from, tick data from the Tick Data Suite. So for the last test where I used the Dukas copy uh, data, the tick data from Dukas copy, it was kind of similar. The trades in the live account were kind of similar to the ones in the tester. No, there's a really big difference. And this is because this Alpari ECN data, it has just a bigger spread. So if we have a look at the, this is the test. And if we have a look at the spread here, so you can see the spread is usually, it's sometimes nine, it's eight, it's 15, it's, it's, it's big. And this is because the Alpari ECN1 data from the TIG data suite, it um, has a larger spread than the Dukas copy data. The Dukas copy data comes from a account, I guess, where you have a really low spread or a close to market spread. And um, then you can work with a commission as uh, trading costs. But here we have the spread already as trading costs because this is a standard account at the Alpari uh, brokerage. So what we would have to do is 
we would of course have to delete the commission here because we cannot apply the commission if there is no commission in the um, Alpari uh, uh, standard account and therefore we should not apply the commission because it would just double the, uh, the trading costs, right? So I'm doing the same test. I didn't change anything in the settings of the EA. I just changed the commission. So I'm now doing the same test with the same data uh, in this Alpari, um, yeah, from the Alpari broker. And now I'm not using um, the commission. So the only cost we have is the spread. And this is what is most accurate, of course, if we try to mirror the performance of a program in a um, potential Alpari account. And yeah, we see the performance is now way better. So this should be more accurate, accurate. But still, if we compare it, just compare the trades, like the sequence of winning and losing trades, we can see um, there's a really big difference, especially here at around trade 120 to 140. We see we had way more losing trades in the Alpari account or with the Alpari data. And this is again because of the spread. Because if you have a scalping strategy like this, where we have TPSL of like 200 points maximum, we have a trailing stop of 10 points and stuff, this will make a crazy difference. Um, like it, it might be that in the Alpari account that uh, the stop loss is already triggered because of the big stop loss. But in a uh, account where you do not have the um, increased spread, the, the trade is still active because the ask price for a short trade obviously did not hit the stop loss. So this is why the bid and ask price difference or the spread in general, in general can make such a huge different difference. So the takeaway from this is when you have or when you trade in a live trading account that has a close to market spread, which should be in euro dollar, should be around 0, 1, 2, 3 points, you cannot test on data that has a increased spread, which is coming from a standard account like the Alpari one. And this is super important. So you should always use the data that is most realistic for your purpose. So if you want to use a account later on where you do not have an increased spread, but pay commission instead, and this is what I prefer, you will of course have to test in a um, account that, um, uh, that, that, that also doesn't have the increased spread. So for me, for example, I will always use the Dukes copy data from now on. So let's have a look at the outcome of the tests again, just to round things up. So what I did here is I, um, I made screenshots of my four tests and we can see, yeah, here, this was the test with the Dukes copy data and this was the test with IC markets. And if I just switch from one, from one to another, we can see that they are like, just when it comes to the trades and the, the oh, mm, mm, wait, <laughs> and, and, and the, um, the overall development of the graph, it's kind of similar, I would say. Uh, actually, the, um, both of them do not mirror the performance of the trade body perfectly, but um, they both come kind of close, I would say. And um, yeah, this is pretty much what is most important. So for example, the IC markets um, broker data test, it was missing, I think, two losing trades here, or at least one losing trade here. And then it had all the three losing trades here, whilst the Dukes copy data, I think here it was the other way around. We had one, two, three, we had all the four losing trades here, but we miss one losing trade here. So you can see none of, none of the data was mirroring the live performance perfectly. And even though we had a 100% history quality with the Dukes copy um, test here. And um, yeah, so you might say this is because this was Dukes copy data and I'm trading in IC markets, but um, I believe this is, um, even if you would trade a Dukes copy account, um, it would still not be completely the same. So even if you have 100% history quality, it does not mean that the performance is 
actually accurate. It just means that the tick data is kind of complete, so there are no big gaps. But it doesn't mean that whatever happens in the test would have happened in the live trading account. This is what I want to show you in this um, test. Also, we can see like for IC Markets, we have 171 trades. For Ducas Copy, we have 174 trades. And these minor changes can be because of um, the spread and everything and differences. And in the live account, we had 172 trades. So both of these tests are kind of close, but none of, none of them is perfect, right? So um, yeah. Uh, when it comes to the actual profit, all of the tests had a be better profit than the live trading account. And I mean, this, like my testing environment was not perfect. And I do not want to make you think that it was because in this account, in the live account, I didn't only trade Euro US dollar, but I also traded USD Japanese yen, which of course also affected the um, trades in the Euro US dollar because um, of the position size and everything. Like U USD Japanese yen produced some losses, which means uh, means that the position size was reduced for the euro euros dollar trades also. But yeah, so this is why I do not want to like have a look at every single number and want to compare, compare it one on one. But uh, for me, it is important to have a look at the graphic, uh, especially to see if the trades are kind of similar. And <clears throat> actually with the 100% history quality, also with the 80% history quality, it was not that far off. And I always said that the history quality is not like super, super important, but I kind of have to, um, I kind of made up my mind when I did the testing with a 100% data. I think it is definitely better than uh, just 20% data or something. This is um, out of question at this point. So from this point on, I would try to use high quality data for testing and stuff. And yeah. And also, yeah, if we have a look at Alpari again, I mean, this it doesn't make sense to uh, compare this to the actual live trading performance because Alpari, the Alpari data was from a standard standard account where we have this bigger spread, so it makes no sense to compare it to a um, close to market spread account. And yeah, this is um, what this testing series showed here. And yeah. So this is it on history quality in the MetaTrader 5. So the main takeaways are you, you should definitely aim for a high history quality and it's easy to get it. Just use the tick data suite and then make sure um, to use the same account model that you use for live trading also for testing. So if you are using a account that has um, market-like spreads and in euro US dollar that that means it's one two or three points most of the time um, or 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 pips uh, of course if there are news events the spread will be higher but like on average it should be really low and if you're using a standard account where you have a higher spread but no commission in your live trading then of course you should use um, for example the Alpari data from the tick data suite and yeah, and the, the third takeaway, you can do as much testing as you as you like, but you can never really be 100% accurate with your testing, especially when it comes to slippage. And this is um, probably the main reason why the testing um, performance was most of the time way better, because this is a program, the Skyping project program that I used for the live account and for the testing here. It is a program that is highly affected by slippage, which means that a lot of time um, times in the in the live account, the um, the stops um, will be or the, the losses will be bigger than they should be because of the slippage. And um, yeah, this is probably the main reason why the performance in the live account is worse than it is in the tester. But yeah, I think this video was a good uh, summary <clears throat> of history quality and what it really means in, um, in the MetaTrader 5. So history quality 100% never means that these were the actual trades and that they would have happened exactly like this in the tester. It's just not how it works. So thanks for watching. I hope you like this little insight. Let me know what you think in the comments as always. And yeah, we'll try to do some more testing in the future with high quality data and yeah, let you know how this would have turned out with different strategies and systems. So thanks for watching. Have a great time and good trades. I'm out. Bye-bye.